I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is December 15th, 2021. I will note for the record that all three commissioners are present, but I will be leaving at 1030. Uh, we'll begin with our commissioner's public statement, and that will be read by Commissioner Giffens. Morning. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear, and we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you so much. Next on our agenda, we have um, our department updates and we will begin with Ms. Cottle from the health department. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for allowing me to be here again today. I, I don't have a lot of updates, so I will, will be quick. We will remain in an orange advisory this week. All 92 counties are still in either an orange or a red advisory. We did have a slight decrease this week, so we should be about 260 cases per 100,000, which is down from 279. So a very small decrease, but one nonetheless. And we have a slight decrease in our positivity rate. But again, we are orange and we will remain there for a while. Our fully vaccinated rate at this time is 58.7% um, are fully vaccinated and 59.2% of our eligible population has received at least a first dose. So we are getting closer to where we were before we added that last eligibility group. Um, and we hope that our vaccination rate will continue to go up for fully vaccinated individuals. So far, public health clinic uh, staff and volunteers have given over 6,000 vaccinations. And of those over 2,500 have been in children five to 11 years old. Uh, this does not include other venues like providers, pharmacies, mobile clinics, and what have you. So we're, we're working very, very hard to get everybody their vaccine, their boosters, um, not just for COVID as well. We continue to do flu vaccinations and other routine vaccinations that are needed. Indiana University has reported a good response to their Moderna clinic this week. And today's the last day for that, I believe. So you can still register. I know that they were also taking some walk-ins as they're able to do that. Uh, but you can find that site on ourshot.in.gov. And if you need an appointment, they are there to take care of you with Moderna as long as you are eligible for that. So it's a great place to go get those boosters, right? If you need that booster. We are working on a mobile clinic for next week. It should be here Monday through, or Monday through Wednesday. Uh, it will be on the west side of town. And um, I will have more information forthcoming on that, but I will definitely have all the details on Friday during our press conference. And we will get other information out as soon as we have it. It will have testing as well as vaccine for all eligible groups. We're also requesting another mobile unit for early January. So we wanna take advantage of those opportunities and give our residents and uh, people near us, people who come here for fun or for work, uh, to have the opportunity to not only get tested, but to get their vaccine, whether it's their first dose or their third dose, or it's a, a booster for them. Indiana hospitals are reporting that they are at capacities higher than they have experienced before, and that is very concerning. But I will also tell you that the Indiana Department of Health re reported during the month of November, 81% of the COVID cases 82% of COVID deaths and 94% of COVID hospitalizations were all in those who were not vaccinated. So vaccines are needed and they work. Uh, take, 
take opportunities uh, where we have them provided. There are many opportunities to get your vaccine. Breakthrough cases still remain an extremely small percentage of all of our cases. And a recent study from the Commonwealth Fund found that if there had not been COVID vaccines available in the US by this time last year, there would have been an additional 1.1 million deaths and 10.3 million hospitalizations in the US. And you can see that report. You go to commonwealthfund.org and that report is available for you. So as holidays continue to be celebrated and people gather, I ask that you take a moment to pause, assess the risks around you and do what you can to reduce the risk of illness, not only in yourself, but also in those you care about and plan to gather with. I wish everyone a safe and a healthy holiday. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cottle. As always, great information, and, um, and it is scary to see those numbers so high, especially as we enter the holiday season. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Jones? Well, it is a great concern that the numbers are still that high, but at least there's a little bit of hope in that they're moving in the right direction. And uh, if people will just continue to get vaccinated, we can keep them moving in that direction. And maybe someday be able to go back to normal or at least some kind of normal. Uh, just thanks for your very thorough update as usual. Um, I wish the numbers were different. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Cottle, and we will see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and next we have um, it looks like we're supposed to have um, Barb Uli from Washington uh, Township, the trustee from Washington Township. Uh, Ms. Purdy has the information though, so we can go with that. Yeah, I just sent her a, an email saying, hey, I wonder. Um, the uh, township trustees had reached out to uh, me earlier, either this week or last week, sorry, I'm losing track of time, um, and requesting a $25,000 disbursement um, to assist um, with their um, community members who are in need. And I had a conversation um, with you guys, and that conversation was this, the, the agreement that we currently have that is um, signed by you, the Board of Commissioners, and the Council, um, terms at the end of this year, and the fact that the um, townships have been um, very responsible with their use of the funds and the need, um, the recognized need that we're obviously still very much in this pandemic and the need to have the um, townships be able to respond um, as quickly as possible. So um, last night went to the, to the council meeting and the council approved uh, where you guys could actually distribute um, up to the $50,000, which was, is the remainder of the money that had been appropriated for this very purpose. So um, I am going to ask on behalf of the township trustees that you approve a $50,000 disbursement um, to the township trustees for the use of um, assisting our community members who are in need, specifically in response to the COVID, the COVID um, pandemic. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, somebody want to make a motion on that? I sure. move. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, no, go, go, go. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a try. I move that we, uh, pass another $50,000 to go to the township trustees. Second. All right, and this is for the Township Assistance Fund. And um, this is a program where the folks in need who are having a hard time paying their uh, bills, their uh, basic necessities, everything from utilities to food to rent, uh, can go ahead and contact their township trustee and ask for assistance. And this will bring our total up to what, Ms. Purdy? Uh, the total for um, both years, I believe, will be $200,000. Right. And also, right. while I have you, I, I, and Jeff Cockrell is on this call, I do believe that we will also need to have a second motion for you to approve the amended contracts, unless it's on our 
unless it's on our agenda. And I apologize. I'm just having a having a. No, it's not. Well, um, um, Mr. Cockrell, do you have that contract to put up on the screen? It's item L on the agenda. Okay. Is yeah, it, I, um, I thought it was oh, on there. You know, yeah. I still have. I yeah. still yeah. have an older agenda with me. I, I'm working off a yeah. paper today. Yep, there it is. Perfect. There it is. Yes. Uh, Thank good. you. Sorry, so, Jeff. Um, thanks for everything, everyone. Um, and um, let's see if there is um, any uh, public comment on this item. Just uh, raise your hand in the Zoom screen. Commenters will be limited to a total of three minutes of time. I do not see any. Um, and so just a reminder for our residents that if you're every resident of the county lives in a township, and if you're looking to find uh, contact information for information for your township trustee, you can go, you can call 211 or go to in211.org and find that information there. It's also appears in each of our packets uh, in the minutes. Um, I think thanks, Ms. Freeman, for that. Um, does anybody else have other comments from the board? Yeah, Commissioner Giffen? I, I believe it can also be used to help with um, health care costs. Right. So in addition to the, the rent, utilities, those kinds of things. So. And, and I would just note for the record that this, this approval is contingent upon the approval of item L on the agenda. Okay, great. So noted. Um, all right, and so with that, um, we'll come back for a vote on the additional disbursement of $50,000 to the Township Assistance Fund contingent on the approval of item L on the agenda. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. And uh, we'll now move on to the uh, portion of our agenda where we offer a time for public comment. And this is for items that are not on our amended agenda. <laughs> um, and, um, and you will have a total of three minutes as you will for each of our agenda items. When you get to two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. Thank you so much. And when you hear that tone, that means you have 30 seconds to wrap up your uh, comment. Uh, so you are welcome to raise your hand in the Zoom screen. We'll ask you to verify your name and your county of residence. And I do not see any hands raised. So with that, we will move on to our next item, please. Move approval of the minutes for December 8th, 2021. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any comments, corrections, edits? There were two um, just Scribner's errors that needed to be corrected. We need to correct the spelling of initiative and item A, which is on page 10 of our current agenda and correct the spelling of amend in item C, which is on page 11 of our current agenda. Those are just Scribner's errors, not anything that's something. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on approval of minutes December 8th, 2021? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we will move on to the next um, item, please. Move approval of the claims docket, accounts payable, December 15th, 2021, and payroll, December 17th, 2021. Second. We have a motion and we have a second and we have Mr. Miller here to tell us all about it. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the total for AP claims was $8,130,000. $3,778,002.60 was for December local income tax or lit distribution. And of that amount, 
$266.09 were for specifically for public safety lit, um, $1,548,862.50 was for People's State Bank uh, for the 2020 general obligation or GO bond principal and interest payment for fall of 2021. Uh, $435,509 was for Jack Doheny Companies, Inc. for the purchase of two stormwater uh, vacuum trucks. $201,495 was for CDW Government, Inc. Uh, for 65 laptops for sheriff vehicles, as well as the additional items that were necessary, such as warranties, memory, docking stations. $200,682.50 was for Life Designs, Inc. for 2021 third and fourth quarter allocation. $159,000 was for Regions Bank for the Convention Center quarterly payment. $150,000 was for Wheeler Mission Ministries, Inc. for emergency services. Um, $129,167.50 was for Old National Wealth Management for 2013, 2015, and 2020 Redevelopment Commission, or RDC, bond interest payments for fall of 2021. Um, only a couple more for this. Uh, $123,341.98 was for Everside Health, LLC, for deferred revenue payments for the first quarter of 2022. Um, and finally, for uh, the larger expense items that were found in this uh, large Claims docket $109,770 were for the city of Bloomington for December uh, public safety access point lit or PSAP lit for central dispatch. Now, as far as payroll is concerned, the total was $964.45 were for payroll direct costs, uh, which was slightly higher at 72.2% due to um, larger incentives in, for payroll. And uh, $591,068.10 were for the indirect payroll costs, uh, such as taxes and retirement at 27.8%. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Miller. Comments, questions, Commissioner Jones? Yes, congratulations on reading so many very large numbers so fluently. Thank you. It took a little time and I struggled at the end, but thank you very much. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Giffen? Yeah, uh, is some of the higher than we regularly see on the, the uh, payroll, is that because of the incentives that employees are receiving for getting vaccinated? Yes, that's correct. Uh, there was, I believe, 400 and um, 9,000, approximately 430, um, I believe 433 or so um, incentive payments that were issued. So yes, that, that is increased due to those incentive payments. I, I just would like to point out to um, residents that that is coming out of uh, the American Rescue Plan Act funding. So um, it's not hopefully going to impact your, your county taxes at this point, but we are, are, we're doing this kind of thing to help keep people safe and healthy. Absolutely. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. I don't see any. And so with that, uh, we'll come back uh, for a vote. Uh, Mr. Popper, will you please call the roll on accounts payable December 15, 2021 and payroll December 17, 2021. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, and we will now move on to new business, please. Move to approve retroactive approval of claim paid under Monroe County Code Section 267-1, fund name, county general, fund number 1000 in the amount of $38,127.71. Second. 
We have a motion and a second, and we have Ms. Gregory here from the auditor's office. Good morning. Tell Good us morning, all about it. Commissioners. Um, so this is a request to approve a claim paid from the general fund on May 5th of 2020. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting concern uh, regarding community spread of the virus, there was an increase in requests uh, for mail-in ballots for the June 2020 primary election. Um, this increase in requests caused an unanticipated need for additional postage. Um, the clerk's office requested issuance of payment to cover the expense associated with the unanticipated mailing. Um, and the Monroe County Auditor's Office expedited the payment of this claim in advance of a formal, a formal approval by the Board of Commissioners. Um, so normally this would go um, to be approved at the next meeting. However, um, it did not. So we're requesting that approval now to kind of take care of this um, housekeeping issue. Excellent. Thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. This seems pretty straightforward. Commissioner Giffen? Uh, no, I, I'm glad that, again, people did the, the smart thing with what was going on with COVID. Um, I hope it helped to reduce the amount of, of uh, staff that were needed for in-person early voting. So um, just looking at this technically, uh, Ms. Gregory, what, uh, what fund is this, was this paid out of? And, and was there, is there a budget issue at all that the council has to consider or not? No, this was paid out of the general fund and um, the funding was there. Um, so there's okay. not an issue of, um, you know, um, of an additional or funding, um, simply okay. approval is needed, you know, for the formal okay. process. Excellent. All right, great. Thank you so much, just for clarity's sake. Thank you. I appreciate that sure. information. Uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen, please. And I do not see any. So with that, uh, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the retroactive approval of a claim paid under Monroe County Code Section 267-1? Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, commissioners. All right, and so we'll move on to the next item, please. Move to approve ERS wireless siren maintenance agreement, fund name County General, fund number 1000, in the amount of $19,620 annually or $1,635 monthly. Second. Great, we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Ms. Petroline, good morning, tell us all about it. Good morning, commissioners. Hope your day's starting out pretty well. I am here to discuss our uh, annual conversation about our siren vendor contract. Um, every year about this time, the emergency management office comes before you and presents a contract that we would have with an external partner to maintain our sirens. I just want to give a kind of a little bit of a detail as to what we're looking at with what a siren does and then the, what the vendor does, because I don't get to speak on outdoor warning signals that much. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time on that. Uh, but we have 47 sirens in the county. Six of them are maintained in the responsibility of Indiana University. 41 of them are maintained in the responsibility of the county. We choose to uh, have a vendor maintain those sirens for us. Those sirens are pretty technical. Uh, they, they work on different electronical signals. So when a tornado siren is initiated, usually by our dispatch, a signal is sent to a hub, and then a signal is sent again to those tornado sirens to rotate and to sound. And then there's a signal that is sent back from those sirens that tells that hub, I worked properly, uh, I rotated, um, or maybe I failed in this particular instance. So it's a very specific niche on understanding how these work, on understanding um, what exactly goes into siren maintenance. So therefore, looking for a siren vendor, we want to make sure that they understand that they are to be regularly maintained. There's a lot of prevention that goes with it, uh, making sure those batteries are up, up to par, making sure all those fuses are good, 
and then also doing any emergency maintenance to it. And that is a 24 seven operation. So if something would happen where that tornado siren would not be communicating properly to that hub, uh, it is the responsibility of that vendor to go out and to figure out what's going on and to get those, those particular products to make that work better. And then it's also the responsibility of that vendor to monitor that software and make sure that communication between the hub and the sirens is up to par and that those sirens are saying, yes, I'm, I'm good to go my rotation and things like that. So we have had the same siren vendor for longer than me. Um, I think when he told me it was about 18 years and he has decided that this was his last year and he was going to retire. We hate to lose him, but uh, so I had to conquer that task of finding a new vendor. And that is today I'm presenting ERS Wireless to you. ERS Wireless is a great partner with us already. They have been partners with this emergency management office prior to my existence here. They have helped us with our radios. They actually set up our emergency operations center radios here. They also are probably almost have partnerships with almost all of the first responders in our county. So they are very aware of the needs of what's going on here in our jurisdiction. They also work with the dispatch centers, which again, like I said before, is where usually our signals come out from. They, they have looked at both of the siren activation systems uh, that are housed in central dispatch and IU dispatch. So they are familiar with that. I also want to bring up that they have a local hub here. I expressed to them that it was very important that if something would happen, I would expect that they would show up at a moment's notice to make sure that my county is safe and that our sirens are working because it's kind of a critical piece for us. And they very much assured me that, you know, we're local here, you know that, and uh, we will definitely um, hold this as something where we have people here that live here and it's important to us. And then just one more thing on ERS, they are all across the state of Indiana and they have done siren maintenance and do do siren maintenance for um, of quite a bit of counties and townships. They provided me with a nice long report of a breakdown of what they look for in each siren would they go to test it. And it was a really thorough report stating they actually cleaned the box that the electrical system is housed in, things like that. So I was pretty happy with that. So um, I would encourage uh, you to look at this contract, keeping all of that in mind. Uh, this proposal is a breakdown of what they would be doing. Again, it covers uh, the annual preventative maintenance, the emergency maintenance that would be needed and the monitoring the software. And the proposal that is in the agenda, unfortunately there is a typo with the yearly amount. They switched the two and the six. So the annual amount is $19,620. I sent an email last night with the um, updated proposal with that correction and with the contracts as well. And just as a side note, this is something that we do every year. So it is in our budget and the amount that they are asking for for maintenance is within our budget. And I will gladly take any questions if you have any. Thank you so much, Ms. Petroline. Uh, great explanation. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Jones. Just thank you for taking care of such a critical part of making sure that Monroe County is as safe as possible. And I'd also like to thank the person who took care of things for 18 years for us. It was a uh, Mulray Electric, uh, Chuck Mulray. He, he did a great job. He, he definitely felt it true in his heart to maintain those. So yes, I will pass that on if he is not on this right now. Yeah. And Commissioner Giffen? Yeah, um, we saw this past weekend how critical the sirens can be um, in Kentucky to our south, Missouri, Arkansas. Um, th these are a vital, vital piece of, of equipment that's needed to keep people safe. Um, I wish the ones in Kentucky had been more effective, I guess. Um, yeah. That's why maintenance, constant maintenance is very, very 
very important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and, and the monthly testing gives us information too about what these exactly. Are. So we all know what they sound like when they go off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. No, this is great, uh, great information. And it's great that you did such a uh, deep dive into the company and uh, that they're serving so many counties in Indiana is a good testament as well to their to their service. So that's uh, excellent work. Uh, appreciate it so much. Um, all right, let's see if there's any um, public comment on this item. Just raise your hand um, on the Zoom screen. All right, seeing none, uh, we'll come back for a vote. Uh, Mr. Popper, will you please call the roll on the ERS wireless siren maintenance agreement? Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Motion is approved, three to zero. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Petroline. Thank you for your time. Uh, with, thank you, and uh, happy holidays. And with that, uh, I'm going to turn this meeting over to uh, Commissioner Jones as I have to skedaddle. So thank you, everyone, and happy holidays. Thank you. And next item, please. Move to, <clears throat> excuse me, move to approve harm reduction program grant amendment. Fund name, harm reduction fund number, 8153 in the amount of $64,514. Second. Ms. Cottle. All right. Thanks again. We have had this harm reduction grant for, I think it's four years. Uh, this provides primarily a person, a personnel in our health department who um, also works with the syringe service program. So they help with data entry. They actually are out on the streets in the field um, with the program as well. Um, they do the naloxone training and distribution and a wide array of other things. So this is generally a calendar year grant. And this year, the state did it as an amendment. So they made it a little bit easier on us. It's not, you know, a brand new grant number. Uh, so it is just really a renewal and an extension of the current grant that we have. Thank you. Commissioner Givens, do you have any comments or questions? No, only that um, I just finished reading uh, Canary in the Coal Mine by William Cook, the doctor down from Austin, Indiana, and clearly harm reduction plays a huge role in keeping people healthy. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this is such an important program. Um, I do remember seeing it a number of times <clears throat> in the past, and it being an amendment does make it much easier. Thank you. Is there any public comment on this item? And seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on the harm reduction program grant amendment? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve the Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis Grant Award, fund name, syringe service program, fund number 9130 in the amount of $25,000. Second, and Ms. Cottle again. Yes, and this falls into that same line uh, as our previous item. We have received funds from the Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis since 2015. Uh, when our syringe service program was first approved. Uh, we started in February of 2016. And these funds are vital. They go really directly to the SSP and, in, and provide services, funding for things, supplies or what have you that they may need that other funding will not cover. So one year, it's it has covered <clears throat> insurance costs that we require as part of the contract. Uh, other years, it provides um, supplies and things like that. So this is very uh, needed funds for the SSP directly. 
And I have to tell you that the funding has ranged from five to $25,000. And we've been getting this $25,000, which is phenomenal because it typically is not quite that high. So I'm very, very grateful to the foundation for these funds. Yes, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions, Commissioner Gibbons? No, just that um, the Indiana Recovery, Recovery Alliance will also do training for naloxone um, and really makes a difference again to what goes on. Um, I think we're only one of nine counties, is that correct? In That's the state correct. that has this and it takes commissioner approval to keep it going, right? Yes, and you I'm, just did that last month? Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to do it. <laughs> yes, it, this is an incredibly valuable program. I certainly wish that more counties in Indiana would take it up, but at least it's doing great service for us. And, you know, the thing is, counties could even have minimum activity with a harm reduction program. So even those counties that may not want to kind of put their, go all in with the syringe service program, there are certainly things that counties can do, uh, like provide naloxone or other things to kind of move along and uh, maybe test the water and their capacity a little bit and build the rapport with the clients and, and the people in need so that they can even just do those referrals that people so desperately need. Yes, that would be very nice if they take that on. And is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none. Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis Grant Award? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Giffins? Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. And next item, please. Move to approve 2022 Purdue University Extension Agreement, fund name, county general, fund number, 1,000-30006-0000-0011 in the amount of $122,600. An interesting fun name. Thank you. Second. Good morning, Amy Thompson, <laughs> County Extension Director. Uh, this is an annual agreement with Purdue University and Monroe County that um, provides for the services that the extension office delivers to Monroe County citizens, um, educational programming on agriculture, natural resources, community development, our 4-H program, and then health and human sciences. So um, this is an agreement um, that every county in the state uh, makes with Purdue University. Um, annually and um, I'm happy to answer any questions and um, as always, thank you for your support. Thank you. Commissioner Gibbons, do you have any comments or questions? No, I, I remember when my parents um, bought a small farm, it was the extension agent that they went to for things like soil testing and you know recommendations on kinds of crops and just all kinds of things that I had no idea an extension officer did you know yep a lot of people are still un unaware that we're here and here to serve them so um yes contact us with your questions related to any of those programming areas we're happy to try and help when you do nutrition work and other things as well right correct yes home budgeting um stretching your food dollars um health nutrition wellness all that all that kind of um activity educational uh, activity Yes, thank you. Um, as a farmer myself, I am very aware of the extension office and all they have to offer, which is truly wonderful. Um, I was curious, does every county actually have an extension office? In Indiana, every county still has their own extension office, yes. Staffing uh, varies a little bit by county. Um, 
through your support, we're able to um, maintain three extension educators. Some counties are not quite as lucky. So we are thankful for that. Um, it's um, it's a, a busy and um, interesting job, um, but um, can also be quite time consuming. So um, we are happy to have the staff that we do and appreciate your support for that. Very good. And also um, the extension office sponsors the Master Gardeners program, doesn't it? That's correct. And thank you for asking about that. We have just opened registration for our next um, Master Gardener training program. Um, Master Gardeners learn a lot about horticulture, horticulture, but they also serve as volunteers in our community, um, sharing that knowledge with other people, developing demonstration gardens, like the native plant garden we have on the northwest east corner of the court, uh, courthouse square. Um, so it's a learning opportunity, but also an opportunity to give back to the community. And if people are interested in registering, uh, they should contact our office at 812-349-2575. Yes, this is a, an excellent pro program for people who are wanting to improve their gardening skills and is they've done a wonderful job with the native garden on the courthouse lawn. So thank you for sponsoring it. And I hope that lots of people show up this year. Thank you. Is there any public comment on this item? And seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the 2022 Purdue University Extension Agreement? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And next item, please. Uh, move to approve combined public communications agreement. No um, fund name, number, or amount. And is Commander Crow? Yep. Commander Crow. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, the, the Correctional Center is wanting to change its vendor for inmate communications. Um, we currently have a company called Global Tel Link, and we are wanting to switch to a company called Combined Public Communications. Uh, the reason for this, a little bit of the backstory, uh, in October, we were notified that the FCC, which regulates communications with jails and prisons, um, was going to to redo some of its uh, fees and limit the amount that a communications company could collect from inmates. Um, and this was supposed to be done, I believe, by October 26. So we were given you know, two to three weeks uh, to go back and look at our communication agreement and to possibly sign a new agreement with the co company that we currently held business with. Um, with that, that company was wanting to decrease the fees per FCC regulations um, that inmates would be charged to make telephone calls. And in order to keep their funding, they wanted to increase other technology fees, such as tablet, tablet usage, and also decrease the commission that the Correctional Center received from the inmate phone calls. Um, we didn't feel that this was quite right. So we began looking into other companies, other vendors. That's when we ran into CPC and spoke with them. Um, they were not affected by the FCC rules, regulations. They were already underneath the, the regulated uh, fees that they were able to charge. Um, they have other devices, which we think are just as equally important to the inmates to allow them to communicate with their friends and family. And they're going to be able to give us a better percentage of commission uh, than the previous company was. Um, and I, I talk about commissions. So commissions that we receive from inmate communications go towards our commissary. Plan. And there is actually an Indiana code and it is Indiana Code 3681021 that regulates what the commissary funds can be used for. 
and there's nine things that basically we can use that money. Uh, so I'll read those off really quick. Uh, merchandise for resale to inmates through the commissary. So basically a commissary is like going to a convenience store. Um, inmates can purchase hygiene items, clothing items, um, food items, drinks, uh, basically anything you could go to a convenience store, Dollar General store, something like that to purchase. Um, so it, it supplies the products for that. Expense of operating the commissary, including but not limited to facilities and personnel. Special training in law enforcement for employees of the Sheriff's Department. So we utilize those funds to help with training for the staff. Um, we send staff to things, uh, to specialized trainings for things like mental health, leadership development. Um, the sheriff has utilized this for other training opportunities for the road division as well. Um, so that's very important to us. Uh, equipment installed in the county jail. Uh, when I first became jail commander, we had a contract with a video company uh, to provide our closed circuit television system. And the jail funded that. And so again, it's another important thing that that commissary is used for. Uh, equipment, including vehicles and computers, computer software, communication devices, office machinery and furnishings, cameras, photographic equipment, animals, animal training, holding and feeding equipment, and supplies for retire used by an employee of the sheriff's department in the course of their of the employee's official duties. An activity provided to maintain order and discipline among the inmates of the county jail. Uh, so one thing that we use the funding for in the jail every year is to help with our library funds, uh, to purchase books, things like that for our library program. And that's one of the best programs that we have in the jail, um, simply because the number of books that are circulated throughout the jail and the number of inmates that read those books. Um, activity or program of the Sheriff's Department intended to reduce or prevent occurrences of criminal activity, including the following, substance abuse, child abuse, domestic violence, drinking and driving, juvenile delinquency. So we use some of these funds to help supply and help provide uh, certain equipment, uh, programming material for our adult education, for our uh, our therapeutic blocks, um, furniture for those blocks to make it more of a therapeutic setting. Uh, and then the last one is expenses related to the establishment, operation, or maintenance of the sex and violent offender registry, and then um, other purposes that benefit the sheriff's department. So the commissary fund is a great fund for the sheriff's office, the inmates, the staff. Um, so I, I think switching to this new vendor would benefit everyone involved, um, lower rates for the inmates, better access, um, better access to the law library that would be included with this program. Um, so I think it's a win-win for the sheriff's office, for the jail, and for the inmates. Thank you. Do you have any questions or comments, Commissioner Givens? Um, I think I read in this that there you're going to have other devices also with this contract. Is that correct? They have a device. That it's called a chirping device. And basically, it's like an Apple iPod. Um, they can send messages through it. And there is a certain fee associated with that. And I don't remember that fee off the top of my head, but it's very minimal. Um, but it allows another form of communication with the inmates and their friends and family outside. And I think any time um, we can allow the inmates communicate with people outside, uh, it reduces some of the risks that are associated with jails. Um, so again, technology, you know, it, it's one of those things that it's a good thing and a bad thing at certain times. But I think this type of technology over what we had with the tablets um, is a benefit to us and to the inmates. We, we all had to learn what chirping was with this contract. It's a, it's, it's a very funny name. And the, you know, even speaking with other sheriffs, other jail commanders throughout the state, um, and actually in other states um, that CPC is affiliated with, they have nothing bad to say about this company. Um, so again, I, I recommend that, that we switch to this company and, and try to take a step forward. 
Yes, uh, this definitely sounds like an improvement and congratulations on finding it um, and taking the time to find it. And at this point, is there any public comment on this? And seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the combined public communications agreement? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Crow. Thank you. And next item, please. Uh, move to approve advanced correctional health care agreement fund name county general fund number 1000 in the amount of $1,054,921.50 annually or $87,910.13 monthly. Thank you. And Commander Crow, again. You want to second that? Oh, I'm sorry, second that. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> sorry. Uh, we have a long-standing history with Advanced Correctional Health Care. They provide the medical service and mental health services within the jail. Um, with this increase, uh, amendment to our contract, things that we would be adding um, would be additional hours for our medical staff. Currently, we have um, LPNs here 114 hours a week. We would increase that to have an RN. 40 hours a week and then LPNs at 104 hours a week. So we would increase from 114 hours to 144 hours. And one thing to note with this is the adding of an RN. I think with the RN, we get more administrative qualities. Um, the RN would serve as the site manager for the facility, do the scheduling, and just basically run the operation here. Um, constant communication with doctors, with dentists, um, with x-ray services that come into the jail, um, and then just the added experience, the knowledge, the education that an RN has over an LPN. Um, and then with the LPNs, the added hours, uh, we would get better coverage. We would go from about 12 hours a day to about 14 hours a day. Um, it would allow us to have a little bit more coverage when the doctor's here, when the dentist is here, things like that. And it would give us more coverage on the weekends, which would we would greatly benefit from. Um, <clears throat> also with this, we would be increasing our mental health providers from 60 hours a week to 80 hours a week. That would give us two full-time qualified mental health professionals, LCSWs. Uh, with the onset of COVID you know, last year and this year, we have seen a dramatic increase in the cases of mental health and severe mental health within the jail. Um, so having the, the mental health professionals here more would benefit, again, the inmates and the staff. Um, we would like to start doing some programs with the mental health uh, to start trying to to help with some of those mental health needs and at least get people maybe on the right foot when they get out of jail, um, get them on their medications, and then hopefully get them transitioned into some other type of care when they get out of jail. Um, so those are the two biggest things, the increase in mental health and the increase in our nursing staff. And I, you know, I think right now Monroe County has one of the premier mental health programs in the state. And I think that's something that we just need to keep working, working forward with. Um, so I, I think these two things are greatly needed here. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Commissioner Gibbons? Well, uh, two things. Um, I noticed that with the increased hours on the um, qualified mental health professional, it um, we're no longer having a charge per contact. Is that correct? Or did that with mental health, we've never had a charge for contact. Okay. Um, the only charge for contact was with medical and 
there is, there is some reasoning behind that, and I can speak with you personally on that at some point in time. Okay, then I just didn't understand what was there. The other thing is that I, it's a very sad commentary on our society that jails are serving as our mental health providers. Yes, and you know I I do a lot of training with the sheriffs association, the Indiana Sheriffs Association, and the executive director. Um, Steve Luce, who is also a resident here in Monroe County, has always stated um, that our jails are the largest mental health facilities in our community. And I, that's very evident working here. Um, the number of people that we see coming through that have mental health. And, you know, it's really shocking the number of people that we see that have severe mental health problems um, that basically can't function in any other type of program or any other type of setting. And it's unfortunate that they, that the only resort for them is to come to jail. Yeah, Indiana used to have a very extensive network of mental health facilities. Um, I'm not looking to go backwards, but I certainly think that we're not serving our citizens the way we should. So. Yeah, you know, the, the whole thing behind that was to deinstitutionalize mental health. Right. And I think that that's basically what we're reverting back to now. Um, you know, there's a large percentage of people that have mental health um, that have contacts with law enforcement. And unfortunately, um, we just, we don't have the resources to deal with them appropriately. And they end up in jail. Yes, it's, it's my hope that our community can work together to provide more in the way of mental health services to people who are in need before they ever come into contact with law enforcement. And in that way, they will be greatly helped because jails are not good places to treat mental health problems. Right. And it'll also help out in the jail a whole lot to not have so many of these people who have very serious needs um, lodged in our jail. And, and you know, having a good mental health program, having a community like this, um, it's like a double-edged sword. You know, we can provide for our community, but we also get a lot of people from other communities that realize that we have a lot of services here. So that attracts people from other communities to our community. And you know, with that with that type of a influx coming in, we just can't handle all of it. Yes, it's uh, too bad that other communities can't or haven't been able to be as proactive with these kinds of things. Yes, it is. All right. Is there any public comment on this item? And seeing none. There is, there is one. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. I. Jeff McKim has his hand up. But Councillor McKim. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. I just wanted to speak in favor of this, uh, this contract amendment. We, uh, the County Council uh, appropriated the uh, additional funds for this uh, as part of the 2022 budget and we very much recognize the need for the additional services provided and while it's it's not a good thing that we need to provide these services we recognize the importance in particular of adding this additional shift of uh, mental health support so we really appreciate your support for this contract and thank commander crow for uh working with advanced health care to uh uh, to make these changes. Yes, and thank you to the council for funding these changes, which are so very important. And seeing no further comment, public comment, Mr. Cockrell, would you please recall the role on the Advanced Correctional Health Care Agreement? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner. Man. Holiday season. You too. Next item, please. Move to approve memorandum of understanding with Community Justice and Mediation Center, also known as CJAM. Fund name, 
lit special purpose fund number 1114 in an amount not to exceed $32,000. Second. Thank you. Mr. Hatfield. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Um, each, uh, each year around this time, I come to you um, with this uh, memorandum of understanding with the Community Justice and Mediation Center. And uh, what we do is, I mean, with our youth clients that we have, we're often looking for an, kind of an evidence-based approach for uh, rehabilitative options. And in that search uh, and, and in support of that, um, we look to the Community Justice Mediation Center to help provide uh, restoration services, um, uh, specifically, you know, victim and the victim offender restoration program um, uh, that's in other jurisdictions has proven to help reduce um, uh, recidivism or future contact with the juvenile justice system in other jurisdictions. Jurisdictions. Um, what this MOU does is um, it provides us an opportunity to refer our uh, juvenile clients or appropriate juvenile clients where there are victims involved in their cases um, to this program so that they can, uh, CGM can work with those clients and those victims, bring them together, and hopefully um, provide some meaningful uh, restoration services and come up with a mediation agreement. Sometimes that means restitution, and sometimes that means other options uh, that's most appropriate for those cases. Um, but this will help provide um, some funding to continue that program on into the future, and, and we're hopeful that you would be supportive of this. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Commissioner Givens? Only that every time that this is successful in, in reducing recidivism, it saves souls, basically, and it also saves society money. Yes, this is such an important program um, and especially for working with with youth who can make bad decisions without quite realizing how bad a decision it is and hopefully this helps them to comprehend what their decisions are doing for them <clears throat> and is there any public comment on this I do not see any. Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the MOU with Community Justice and Mediation Center? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve award 2022 Community Crossing Grant program paving projects, fund name, motor vehicle highway, fund number 1176, in the amount of $1,067,863.30. Second, Ms. Ridge, we are going to once hear, again hear about this wonderful program that helps us so much. Absolutely, good morning. Um, so the award of the uh, the, the last round, we submitted projects in July and we were awarded in later on and a couple items we'll be doing those contracts with NDOT. Um, sealed, build, sealed bids were received and opened publicly on December 6th uh, for the community crossing matching grant paving projects. There were three bids received. The following projects are being awarded to the lowest, most responsive and responsive bidder, responsible and responsive bidder. Howard Road, Low Gap Road, Starnes Road, Fish Road, Mount Carmel Road, and Wisnan Road is awarded to milestone contractors. Guthrie Road, Chapel Hill Road, and some wedge and level work that was um, included in the bid is awarded to Flynn and Sons Excavating and Paving Incorporated. 50% of the cost from the CC is, will be from the CCMG program, and the remainder is local funding from our MVH. Um, the total is $1,067,863.30. 30 cents. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Commissioner Givens? No, I know that our residents are always happy when the roads are improved, so good job. Yes, I think people traveling through the state also improve, <laughs> appreciate finding improved roads. Um, and you have been so successful in acquiring they the like money. They like Blacktop, right? Project. Yes. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment on this item? 
and I don't see any. Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on awarding the 2022 Community Crossing Grant Program paving projects? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ridge. And next item, please. Move to approve award Strausser Construction Company, Inc. bid for New Brine Building. Fund name and number to be determined in an amount of $376,200. Second, Ms. Ridge. Um, so sealed bids were opened and read aloud on December 8th, 2021 by Jeff Cockrell and Toby Turner. Two bids were received, Strausser Construction and American Building Associates. The architect for this project, Michael Chambly, has written his recommendation for the project to be awarded to the lowest, most responsible, responsive bidder, which was Strausser Construction. Um, to be determined, uh, we will be working with the commissioners and the council over the next month or so while um, contracts are being prepared if it's, if it's approved today um, for the funding of this project. We did receive $285,000 last year for a new brine system from NDOT when we did the transfer agreements with I-69. However, as we have moved forward, the cost of this project has increased. Um, so um, that is why we are falling short. However, the NDOT funding is almost 50% of what a brine system will cost. In the end, um, the brine system will pay for itself. Um, it will save us money in the long run. Uh, we can do pretreatment. Um, we can save on overtime. So um, it's, a, it's a huge cost up front, but again, and the system that we are putting in, it's something that can be expanded. We're not limited to where uh, we can increase using more brine as we move forward in the, in the future years. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Commissioner Givens, any comments, questions? Well, we, we've talked about this before, about how this is better for the environment. It mm -hmm. is better for the roads. The roads will, will hold up better. But also, it occurred to me after we talked last night time, it's probably better for vehicles, too. There'll be less rusting and things like that because of what's not kicked up underneath fenders and, and things like that. So I think it, it not only saves county government money, but it will save residents money in the long run, too. It's probably easier on tires, also. Yeah, it, there's a lot of benefits to brine. It's just something that we had not really been able to, as you can see from the cost of it, to afford to start a whole new system. But with the assistance of uh, NDOT, um, it's, it's got us moving into today's technology and uh, building a system that uh, we can be proud of, so. Yes, well, thank you. It's, it's very exciting to see this project moving forward. It's something that we'll benefit from in a whole lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And is there any public comment on this? And seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on awarding Strausser Construction Company Incorporated the bid for the new Brine building? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve NDOT Community Crossing Matching Grant Contracts, Fund Name, Motor Vehicle Highway, Fund Number 1176, in an amount of $597,025.77. Ms. Ridge. So um, this is actually the contracts that we uh, were awarded in the last Community Crossing uh, program and actually goes hand in hand with the uh, paving projects that you just awarded to Milestone and Flynn and Sons for paving in 2022. Um, it's a 50 50 um, cost, so it's 50% from NDOT if you're awarded the projects and 50% from local funding. Um, and I'm sure you don't need me to read all the roads again, but. Thank you. <laughs> Any comments or questions, Commissioner Gibbons? No, it's just good to keep moving on these things. Yes, it is. And is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, 
Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the INDOT Community Crossing Matching Grant contracts? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you. Happy holidays to you all. Thank you, you too. Next item, please. Move to approve interlocal agreement with township governments to deliver relief from immediate and longer term COVID-19 economic impacts amendment. Bond name, county general, bond number 1000 in an amount not to exceed $50,000. Thank you. Mr. Cockrell, we discussed this summer earlier. Yes, this, this is a continuation of the, uh, and this was the contingency of the approval of the $50,000 claim uh, for, uh, to submit the money to the township trustee. This is just a continuation of an agreement we already have. It's, it's an amendment essentially to end it. Um, we have $50,000 left in that contractual agreement. We have the $50,000 appropriation. This just allows that final payment to be made at a, a $50,000 level instead of the $25,000 increment that we had been using all along. Thank you. Comments or questions, Commissioner Givens? No, I'm just really, really pleased that we are able to help the residents of Monroe County in this manner. Um, I know that for many families, it's doubled the amount of assistance that they've been able to receive. And um, we've worked really hard to keep people housed, fed, employed, and healthy. And um, I think the numbers show that in terms of the COVID numbers that we've seen compared to our surrounding counties and people around the state. Yes, um, this has been such an important program and, and I would like to thank the council for supporting it also. Um, it's really done incredible things for our community. Are there any questions from the public? And seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the interlocal agreement with township governments to deliver relief from immediate and longer term COVID-19 economic impacts? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve ASI Facilities Services, Inc. Agreement Amendment. Fund name, county general, fund number 1,000 in an amount of $868,608. Second, Mr. Cockrell again. Yes, uh, this agreement does two things. Uh, the first, it, it consolidates all but one agreement we have with ASI. Um, they currently handle the janitorial and uh, maintenance and security for all of our justice related buildings, including the Johnson Hardware Community Corrections Building, Curry Building, Fiscus Building, the parking garage, the, the Justice Center. And I, I think they do some work with the highway garage as well. It's all involved. So it's putting all of them into one contract with the, with the exception of through PS Lit, there is, the courts have an agreement where they can add a, a few uh, guards as needed. Um, in those buildings, that's not part of this. Uh, the second thing it does is due to the current labor market, this and due to, I think, um, preferences by both the, that have been expressed by both the commissioners and the council over the past few years, it does set a minimum amount uh, per hour payment of $15 for all um, full-time non-probationary employees. So that is necessary in order to one, keep staff, and two, to make sure that the staff can, can meet the basic living needs there that are required for ASI. So those are kind of the two, two major differences and the two goals that we were accomplishing when we put together this amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Givens, comments or questions? No, I read through it and it seems pretty straightforward. Detailed, but straightforward. <laughs> Yes, it is detailed, but uh, yes, it, it's good to have ASI taking care of these facilities for us and they certainly do a good job. And is there any public comment on this? 
Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, will you please call the roll on ASI Facilities Services, Inc. Agreement Amendment? Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you. And move to approve, oh, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> forgot my role for a second there, <laughs> reverting back. <laughs> we're good, we're good, come on. Uh, Next item, to, please. <laughs> move to approve resolution 2021-66, approving funding for Wheeler Missions Women's Shelter. Fund name, county general, fund number 1,000 in an amount of $150,000. Second, Mr. Cockrell. Yes, this is a this is somewhat of a continuation of what we've been looking at for for quite a while. I think we had we did sponsor this uh, women's shelter last year, and this therefore is is renewing that for an additional year for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. But it also goes hand in hand with some of the other uh, resolutions we've passed uh, through this COVID nineteen pandemic, which included uh, food banks, particularly those are the ones I remember the most, but a, a lot of other different social service um, provision of support uh, kind of ideas. So this is just kind of a continuation of that. This is for uh, $150,000 and this is for the women's shelter through Wheeler Missions. Thank you. Comments or questions, Commissioner Givens? Um, yes, that's my understanding that the city of Bloomington is um, contributing an equal amount and that there'll be additional funding probably from um, United Way. Uh, and the last I heard there were, I think 20 women average per night um, using this shelter. So um, I'm glad that we can ensure that people have housing, especially with, with winter here. Yes, uh, it, it looked for a while as though there might not be a women's shelter this year, and it's quite a relief to make sure that it will happen. We certainly don't want women with young children to be suffering through the cold with no place to go. And is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please Call the roll on resolution 2021-66, approving funding for Wheeler Missions Women's Shelter. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve Indiana American Rescue Plan Act policy revision number one. Second. Mr. Cockrell? Yes, and, I, and I, I'll start with the title is that we, we're calling this revision one. Again, when we initiated this policy, we anticipated that this would be revised on a somewhat frequent basis. And so this is the first uh, revision of that. And that just for the public, this is the, the policy that's required for the use of American Rescue Plan uh, Act funding. Um, that's that federal legislation required this the, the commissioners to approve a policy and then of course there, there's a second step of the county council funding that policy I'm, my computer froze up so i'm trying to scroll down to it the the, the one that i want to make sure that we talk about is, is something that we kind of talked about already today is that it includes the incentive payment um, for vaccination for for county employees the second item in it is that the council and the commissioners have a joint commission reviewing the criminal justice uh, uh, reports and looking at the before, I, what I consider the before you get into the system and once you get out of the system issues and supports for that. And so as part of this adds a contractual position allows for it to be paid out of the American Rescue Plan to kind of deal with those kind of pre, um, pre touching the criminal justice system and post touching criminal justice system. And it, these are designed, and I think the issues that brought out in the, in the studies is that the, these are disproportionately impact uh, groups that are, have traditionally, that, that would have felt a greater burden placed upon them by the COVID-19 vaccination. And 
or COVID back 19, not vaccinations, the COVID-19 <laughs> virus. And so I apologize. And so we're putting this in that plan because we, we, we understand that the requirements for using this fund include, and the allowances include uh, things that would help with those um, individual groups. Thank and you. I think those are the two items that are added to the ready for funding uh, portion. And there was nothing changed with the, hey, we're still looking at these different areas uh, part of the plan. Any questions or comments, Commissioner Givens? No, um, and we heard earlier that uh, over, it sounds like over 400 employees have um, established that they've been vaccinated, which is a really good thing to hear. Yes, it is. And it's, I was also referring to this program, to the program for the criminal justice response coordinator um, when Commander Crow was talking about the mental issues in the in the jail. And this issue is, is something, if we can keep people from ever interacting with the justice system, it's a benefit in many ways to the entire community. And is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on the Indiana American Rescue Plan Act Policy Revision 1? Uh, Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Motion is approved, two to zero. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve order establishing precincts. Second. Mr. Cockrell? Yes, this is a, an order based upon a conversation we've been having since probably September. Um, if you recall, we had, and, and Jared is here to, to go through it if, if you have any questions, um, but we had the Precinct and District Boundary Advisory Commission go through the process and review where the precinct should be, as well as the election boundaries. This item is solely for the precincts though. Um, they came with a recommendation uh, we sent that to the state. We had one uh, issue that the state say pursuant to Indiana Code 311.1.5.3.1 says we're, we're not allowed to do. So we kind of removed that. And that was the, it, it involved no active voters, but that was kind of the, where uh, Jersey mics and, and those kind of things are. We were switching that from one uh, precinct to another. We think that fits the geography and the natural boundaries a lot better. And it, it also uh, would have corrected what could potentially be an issue with the with one of the buildings. Uh, but we went back and forth with them and, and there was just no way around that state code, which says you got to have at least 600 voters if you're going to make this change in each of the two uh, precincts. So absent that, it is just confirming and ordering those changes to be made. We're doing this today because we have to have the notice of these changes and the order published um, prior to next year because it has to be done at least a week before. I think the date's January 5th, so we need to get this the, the final published prior to your next meeting. Thank you. Comments, questions, Commissioner Givens? Uh, no, we've been following this fairly closely, so uh, I appreciate the, all the committee's hard work on, on this, and as well as Mr. Ike Miller's and uh, Karen Wheeler's. Yes, uh, thank you to everyone who was involved in this. And is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call, call the roll on the order establishing precincts. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. And next item, please. Move to approve phase two of the state safe campaign fund name county general fund number 1000 in the amount of $120,000. Second. 
Ms. Purdy. Yeah, good morning. Um, we're gonna end this agenda much like we started it um, in the sense that we got ahead of ourselves. And this is for requesting your approval on a contract um, that we had with um, Lambert Consulting. And it was providing, um, as it's indicated here, phase two of our Stay Safe um, program, which involved um, scripts, billboards, and um, um, uh, social media um, push outs of information to help keep our community um, informed and safe um, regarding COVID-19 and vaccinations. So um, we had actually talked about this before. Um, I know that I presented a council meeting and you guys were there for that also. However, I, we failed to actually provide you with a contract to sign. So we're, I'm asking that you sign the contract today, please. Thank you. Questions or comments, Commissioner Gibbons? Uh, no, I'm happy to, to ratify this, um, given that we're doing everything possible to reduce the spread of COVID and to increase the vaccination rate. Yeah. Yes, this is certainly a very important part of our county's attempt to fight COVID, which has actually been more successful than many Indiana counties. And I think we can thank Lambert and um, company for helping out with this. Is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on phase two stay safe campaign? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Move to approve resolution 2061 64 2022 commissioners' meeting dates. Second. Ms. Prudy. Yeah, um, this item was actually tabled last week. Um, and so we're just asking you to look at this um, and approve the meeting dates for um, 2022. Thank you. Questions or comments, Commissioner Givens? I just want to verify with Mr. Cockrell that should we wish to, we can go back and amend this at any time next year. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct for future meeting dates. So clearly, if the meetings happen, you can't go back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well and, and I assume that we have to do it at least two weeks in advance and things like that to give proper public notice to things. But um, yeah, but, but we can amend it. Yes. If we wish to. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And is there any public comment on this item? And seeing none, Mr. Cockrell, would you please call the roll on resolution 2061-64, the 2022 commissioner's meeting dates? Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Githens. Yes. Motion is approved two to zero. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we have reached the end of new business. There are no appointments to meet, be made today. And there are announcements, but I am afraid that I have the announcements on my other computer, which I don't have with me right now. So yes, Commissioner Githens, if you wouldn't mind reading them. <laughs> Sure. Um, we want to remind people that there's remonstrance uh, opportunities available that <clears throat> they can uh, remonstrate by filing the correct paper for work at Monroe County Courthouse. Enter through the north door, please. This is at 100 um, West Kirkwood Avenue, and you can do that through January 6th. But we need to remind people, too, that we will be closed for the holidays on different days. So it's not every weekday uh, through January 6th that you'll be able to do that. Um, and now through January where January 5th on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 3 to 6 p.m., people can, file, can work with uh, the folks at 1010 South Walnut Street in the public meeting room for uh, Perry Township to work on remonstrances. 
And today, December 15th, um, there's uh, information available and you can, again, get the, the remonstrance paperwork and file it or sign the, the remonstrance anyway at the Monroe County Fairgrounds. That's to this evening between 5.30 and 7.30. There'll be people there to help you. And again, on December 19th, which is Sunday, this coming Sunday from one to three at the Monroe County Fairgrounds again. If you have questions about the remonstrance process, you can call our county auditor or you can call 812-361-4424. Um, as we uh, indicated earlier today, the township assistance funds continue to be available. Every resident within Monroe County is a resident of a township. You can find that information by calling uh, 211 or going to Indiana 211 or by checking our um, weekly minutes uh, where we list not only the names but the contact information for all township trustees. We are inviting applications for boards and commissions for 2022 and um, the final blood drives that we are sponsoring for 2022 uh, are tomorrow, December 16th and Friday, December 17th. Both of these are at the mill at 642 North Madison. The one tomorrow is from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the one Friday is from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you're able to give blood, we urge you to do that because of the shortage in the region. Um, and by doing that, you're saving, saving lives. So thank you. That's all. Thank you. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. We do not have an agenda for a work session, but there is one item for us to hear. And if we come back at 1140, will that work okay for you? Great. Very good. Thank you. See you in a few. <laughs>